within a week of you being named on the VP ticket, the Democratic nominee changed. Mm -hmm. And you guys seem to be struggling a little bit with how to approach the new dynamic. How are you approaching your new appoint opponent and the new ticket? Yeah, well, I think it's pretty straightforward, actually. We're running against a set of policies that I think have failed the American people, and we're running to a set of policies, President Trump's four years in office, that I think really succeeded for the American people. And I think that what's different about it, and you're right, Dana, it is different, but what's different about it is that we're running against a different person who a lot of Americans just don't know. And so I think we have to remind people that President Trump delivered lower prices, lower inflation, a prosperous and peaceful world, and also a secure border, and Kamala Harris's policies have produced the exact opposite. Now, that was an easier case to make when Joe Biden was in there because people associate Joe Biden with the policies. But I think Kamala Harris clearly owns the policies of the Biden-Harris administration, especially when we consider the fact that, as we've all learned over the last few months, Joe Biden clearly isn't capable of doing the job. And so I think that drives home that Kamala Harris really has been the one calling the shots. I mean, how could she not? I think Joe Biden doesn't really know where he is. Kamala Harris has been calling the shots as who? Well, I think she has to have been, right? Because if she's not calling the shots, Dana, then who is? And I do think it drives home something that's fundamentally dishonest about the way that Vice President Harris and also a lot of senior Democrats have approached this. If you remember, for, for months, even years, the argument was that Joe Biden was sharp, he could clearly do the job, and the minute that he performed poorly in that debate and he became political dead weight, you have Kamala Harris and everybody else trying to throw him overboard. But I think the more troubling question is, why did so many senior Democrats, including the vice president, cover for him? And if Joe Biden wasn't capable of doing the job, as even a lot of Democrats say now, was Kamala Harris in charge or was somebody else in charge? And that's a real, real issue. There's no evidence that Kamala Harris threw him overboard. But I just I want to move on to uh, something that Governor Walls has called you and Donald Trump, and that is weird. Sure. And it is taken off. The New York Times reports that when Donald Trump was asked about it, he said, not me, they're talking about J.D. Well, certainly they've levied that charge against me more than anybody else, but I think that it drives home how they're trying to distract from their own policy failures. I mean, look, this is fundamentally schoolyard bully stuff. They can accuse me of whatever they want to accuse me of. Uh, as Harry S. Truman once said, if you can't take the heat, stay out of the kitchen. And I'm doing this because I think that me being vice president will help improve people's lives. So I, I, I accept their attacks, but I, I think that it is a little bit of projection, Dana, if you think about uh, you know, j just take a couple of days ago. Tim Waltz gives this big speech. He's been announced as the VP nominee. And I remember when I had just been announced as the VP nominee, I gave my big speech and I saw my wife and I gave her a big hug and a kiss because I love my wife and I think that's what a normal person does. Uh, Tim Waltz gave his wife a nice firm Midwestern handshake and then tried to sort of awkwardly correct for it. So I think that what it is is two people, Kamala Harris and Tim Waltz, who aren't comfortable in their own skin because they aren't comfortable with their policy positions for the American people. And so they're name calling instead of actually telling the American people how they're going to make their lives better. I think that's weird, Dana, but look, they can call me whatever they want to. You're saying Tim Walls doesn't have affection for his wife? I don't even understand that. I said that he acted weird, which he did, on a national stage in front of his wife and in front of millions of Americans who presumably were watching at home. And I think that it's projection, Dana. Look, I think this election should be about who's going to solve the inflation crisis, who's going to make groceries and housing more affordable, who's going to secure that southern border. Kamala Harris's record is that she supported all the policies that made that problem worse, Dana. We're trying to say we're going to take the country in a different direction. I, I really think I think that it's, it's important to point this out, Dana. Their entire campaign has not been about, here's our policy for how we're going to make your life better, or here's what's wrong with Donald Trump and J.D. Vance's policies. We're going to name call and hope that you don't notice that we don't have an agenda. That is the entire Democrat approach to this election. They, they have done both. They have both policies, and they are trying to, uh, if, to if, define Dana, you as well. If, if you I wanna... go, no, no. If, if you go to Kamala Harris's campaign page right now, they still don't have a policy. Well, let's talk about policy, policy positions versus... about what they're going to do. I think that's really insulting to Americans. You started out talking about the policies uh, in this interview, but you have been on the campaign trail questioning Tim Walz's military record. You say it was shameful that Governor Walz retired from the military before his unit deployed to Iraq. I want to read you something that Joe Eustis, who is a veteran, he served sure. with Governor Walz, said. He said that's a lie. He said, he was a good, as good a soldier as you'll find. I'm not trying to defend him. I hope people don't think that. What I'm trying to do is defend someone who served his country. I'm not voting for him. I'll campaign against him. 
but I don't think it's fair to characterize his service the way they have. Governor Walz served 24 years. Sure. He even stayed after he could have retired because uh, of 9-11, more than the country asked of him. Do you honor his service? Well, of course, Dana, I honor his service. And I've never criticized what Tim Waltz did when he was in the military. I criticized his retirement decision. And most importantly, Dana, I, I criticized his lying about his own record, okay? This is a guy who was captured on video saying, I carried a gun in war. He never went to war. This is a guy who's been captured on video. As other people say, he's an Afghanistan veteran. He's a veteran of a war, nodding along in agreement instead of saying, no, 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 I did serve my country and I did it honorably, but I never went to a war zone. I'm not criticizing Tim Waltz's service. I'm criticizing the fact that he lied about his service for political gain, Dana. Now, I served in the United States Marine Corps, and you know this. And look, there are a lot of things that I'm proud about. I've never lied about what I did or overstated it because it would be beneficial to me in an election. I think that's what Tim Waltz did. That's what I was criticizing. And yes, I do think it's scandalous behavior. You uh, talked about one of the things that he said, weapons of war. He was talking in a campaign stop about, yeah. he was trying to talk about gun control. Sure. And he said, weapons of war I carried in war. Uh, I will say that the Harris uh, Walls campaign did say that the governor misspoke there. Sure. Do you Mi accept that? He misspoke. Another word is that he lied about it and he didn't correct the record for 15 years until he was put under political pressure because I called it out, Dana. Whatever you want to call it, a misspeaking or a lie, I think Tim Waltz should have to correct the record. Now, you pointed out a soldier who defended his service. There have been a number of soldiers who served with Tim Waltz who have criticized him on the exact same grounds that I have because it's not right to misstate or to embellish what you've done. And I think that's what he did. And on the question of when he left the, the National Guard, he filed his election paperwork February 10th, 2005. That was a month before the National Guard even announced that it was possible that they would deploy to Iraq, and it ended up being two months. He retired two months before they actually got the paperwork. But on CNN last night, Dana, uh, one of the people who was actually in charge of him said they knew they were going to deploy to Iraq in February of 2004, so, or excuse me, fall of 2004. So he knew he was going to Iraq. He decided to quit to retire, whatever word you want to use, retire. because whatever, because he wanted to run for Congress. He lied about that. He said that when he decided to retire, he did not know that he was going to Iraq. That is another untruth, as even his senior military officer said. So again, I'm not criticizing the service. I'm criticizing the dishonesty, dishonesty spoken in favor and for the purpose of political benefit. And I think that the most important thing here, Dana, is it goes to Kamala Harris's judgment. Tim Waltz is ultimately going to be the vice president. Kamala Harris is in great health. I'm sure she's going to be president if she wins for four or maybe even eight years. Why did Kamala Harris choose a person who has lied about their military service? I think that is a serious lapse in judgment. And I don't want to hear from a campaign spokesperson of Kamala Harris. I want to hear Kamala Harris herself address what I just said. You know, I, I've seen a lot of statements from veterans, including those you serve with, saying it's just untoward to be criticizing somebody who served for 24 years. Dana, I'm not interested in the ad hominem. I've heard from a lot of veterans groups who criticize Tim Waltz. The question is, he said he served in war, and he didn't. That is a dishonesty. I, I really, I couldn't care less what one or the other person says about it. I care about what the truth is. The truth is that Tim Waltz didn't tell the truth. And importantly, Dana, this is about Kamala Harris's judgment. And I think that when you ask, why has Kamala Harris allowed the border to be wide open? Why has Kamala Harris supported policies that have promoted the increase in inflation? I think it goes to the heart of her judgment. And I think that that's what we should be talking about. One last question. Donald Trump didn't serve in the military. Uh, he received a medical draft deferment for bone spurs to avoid serving in the Vietnam War, reportedly as a favor to his father. Do you find that shameful, too? I think that Donald Trump didn't serve in the military, but he didn't lie about it, Dana. I've known Donald Trump for a long time. You he don't really think he, honors our so veterans. You think he, he had honors bone me spurs? for my service. Donald Trump didn't lie about serving in the military. He didn't say that he went to Vietnam when he didn't. This is the problem. I, I don't criticize anybody. Whether they served our country or not, I think it's honorable to serve. But obviously, a lot of people have reasons for not serving. I criticize somebody for embellishing their record, for lying, saying, I went to war. 
Dana, do, do you think that it's a problem that he said, I went to war, but he didn't actually? That seems to be a problem to me. Well, they've, they've corrected that. Let's move on to... They've corrected it by admitting that Let's move on to another important issue to voters, and Please. that is the issue of abortion. You wrote the foreword for a new book by Heritage Foundation President Kevin Roberts sure. of Project 2025. Project 2025, among many other things, calls for rolling back approval of the abortion drug Mifepristone. Donald Trump told me during the debate that he would not block the drug. And on Thursday, when he was asked, he didn't rule it out. So which is it? Well, look, Dana, first of all, Project 2025 is not affiliated with the Trump campaign. Kevin Roberts is a friend of mine, but I wouldn't say that he speaks for the president in the same way I wouldn't say that he speaks for me. Now, what Donald Trump has said is that he respects the Supreme Court's opinion on the Mifepristone ruling. But let me just stop you right there. The Please. Supreme Court, you're a lawyer, so you know this better than I. Sure. The Supreme Court, all they did was say that what came to them didn't have standing. So they let it stand. A real question, a substantive question, hasn't made it to the Supreme Court. So my question for you is whether or not a Trump-Vance administration would allow Mifepristone to continue to uh, be sent around the country. Well, President Trump won the nomination of the Republican Party. He said it to you, and he said it repeatedly, that his goal is not to block Mifepristone. It's to let states make the decision on abortion policy. Now, of course, that does mean, Dana, we have to be honest about this, that California might have less restrictive rules than Ohio, which might have less restrictive rules than Alabama. I think what President Trump is really trying to do on the abortion question is really admirable, and I wish the, 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 the press was a little bit more honest about it. He's saying we've had a 50-year culture war over abortion, where, unfortunately, Unfortunately, this issue has just divided the country, and he wants to provide some ground for us to come together, for states to make these decisions, for voters to make these decisions, and for us all to respect one another. That's well, all he's on proposed. that issue. On Please. that issue, a few months ago, on the question, his position, yeah. which you've adopted, is it is up to the states. Uh, I spoke to a woman named Kate Cox. She lives in Texas. Sure. She was 20 weeks pregnant. Her fetus was diagnosed with a uh, disease called, it was a deadly genetic condition called trisomy 18. Uh, she said that carrying the pregnancy, she was told this by her doctors, uh, to term if the fetus even survived, would hurt her chances for having more children, which she and her husband desperately wanted. Why is not allowing her to end that pregnancy helpful or supportive of expanding families like you want it to be? Well, for, first of all, Dana, my heart breaks for this woman. I, I don't know her personally. I've certainly heard the story and our heart breaks for her. And we want people to have healthy, happy families. And it's extremely unfortunate that sometimes, you know, medicine, the act of God, whatever happens, it just doesn't work out. And what the president has said, I think, very clearly uh, is that he is not trying to prevent women who have non-viable pregnancies um, from getting access to the medical but care allowing, that they need. But allowing the states to decide a place like Texas, which has very strict laws now, doesn't allow a, a Kate Cox to end a pregnancy that is fatal and could potentially hurt her well, ability to have more kids. But what President Trump has said is that we are going to let voters make these decisions. And again, Texas might have a view that President Trump disagrees with. They might have a view that President Trump agrees with, but you've got to let the voters make these decisions. So you're comfortable with that law in Texas? I'm not comfortable with anything, Dana, because I'm not passing judgment on what these laws should be. Now, you ask me my own personal view. I campaigned against uh, an Ohio referendum, but I think that we have to let voters decide. And when they speak their mind, you have to be respectful. Agree or disagree with whatever voters decide, they're gonna make these decisions. John King is doing a project talking to voters all over swing sure. states. He talked to Republican voters in uh, the critical swing state, must win, I would say, swing state of uh, Pennsylvania. Of course, you love Pennsylvania. One of them, Carol Carty, said she was almost a childless dog lady because she didn't happen to meet the right person until she was 40 years old. Another, Joan London, was uh, offended that you don't think she has a stake in the future of the country because she doesn't have children. What do you say to key voters like that, Republicans, swing voters, sure. who are put off by your views? Well, what I would say, Dana, is if you look at what I said in context, the Harris campaign has frankly lied about what I actually said. 
I'm pro-family. I want us to have more families, and obviously sometimes it doesn't work out, sometimes for medical reasons, sometimes because you don't meet the right person, but the point is that our country has become anti-family in its public policy. Let me just give you an example of this. So after our second child was born, my wife and I, we have three little kids. After our second child was born, we get the baby home from the hospital, we get this ridiculous out-of-network medical bill that is, is financially shocking, and we're pretty well off, and that happened because we have ridiculous laws in this country that are anti-family. I've sponsored legislation to try to fix things like that so moms and dads don't get these surprise medical bills. I think it's important for us to be pro-family. That's well, all that I've ever said. If you want to be pro-family, I want to, because you do criticize, as you just did, the Democratic Party for being anti-family. I do. You called out Kamala Harris and Pete Buttigieg in particular. Kamala Harris has two stepchildren. Pete Buttigieg and his husband have adopted twins. Do you recognize them as parents and more broadly as being part of families? Well, of course I do, Dana. I mean, you know my life story. Well, I was I actually say raised. Of course. I, I was them raised, out by but Dana, I, I was raised. By, I mean, one, by of the, name. one of the first people that I gave a hug to after my, my RNC convention speech was my stepmom, who's been an incredibly important person in my so life. She's not my childless. Kids, my kids call her mammal. Of course she's not childless. But, but again, you called her that. the criticism, I certainly did not call my own stepmom childless. No, no, no. Childless. Kamala Harris. I criticized Kamala Harris for being part of a set of of ideas that exists in American leadership that is anti-family. I never, Dan, I criticize people for not having kids. I criticize people for being anti-child. And I do think that Kamala Harris think she's has made some bizarre statements. She has said things like, it's reasonable not to have children over climate change. I think that's the exact opposite message we should be sending to our young families. I want to expand the child tax credit. I want to stop those surprise medical bills. I want to make housing more affordable so that if you have a young family, you can actually afford to put them in a home and I think that it is unfortunate that so much of our public leadership has become anti-family. One final point on this, Dana, if you go back to the COVID era, one thing that really frustrated me and, and motivated some of these comments is we were at a point where we were kicking kids out of school. We were masking three-year-olds and putting the masks back on them, even though, even as they were trying to rip them off at school. I think that if we had more people who took the right perspective and had a little bit more understanding of how little kids actually operate, we would not have made so yeah. many of those mistakes well, that during was, COVID. That's a whole other conversation. Because no, it's, people it's, it's didn't related know, to no, this. Because, because people you, didn't know as much because it was but, literally a novel sure, virus. But Danny, you asked me I, about, I just, you, you. okay, you've now asked me three questions about comments that I made three years ago. Uh -huh. I wonder what Kamala Harris thinks about the fact that she supported policies that opened the American southern border. I wonder what Kamala Harris thinks about the fact that she lied to the American I'm people you, not about Kamala Harris. Joe Biden's middle middle facility for the office. You are interviewing me, Dana, because I respect the American people enough to sit down for an interview. I appreciate that. Kamala Harris has been the nominee for three weeks. She hasn't sat down for a real Believe interview. Believe me, we are asking. I, and, you're and not going to get but, a disagreement but, 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 there. But the point is, Dana, you've got me for 15 minutes or however long you have me. We should be talking about public policies that matter. How are we going to lower inflation? How are we going to reduce the cost of food and housing? How are we going to close down that southern border? We've talked so little about that. We've talked a lot more about a sarcastic remark I made three years ago, I think we should talk about the issues that well, most Americans well, I, care about. I only asked you one question about that. I asked you about uh, policies, and I was asking about the military record that you brought up, nobody else did, of, of Tim Walls. Um, one last question. This is on policy. Please. Um, the Federal Reserve. Yeah. Donald Trump said this week that he feels strongly that the president should have at least a say when it comes to the Federal Reserve and how to handle interest rates. Do you agree that a president should direct the Federal Reserve on ha how to handle interest rates? Well, not direct. That's not what he said. He said the president should have a say. But one, I absolutely agree with what he said. Well, right now, and the president two, doesn't have a say. Well, the president has a say in the sense that the president appoints the Federal right. Reserve governors. But he's saying, to be clear, President Trump is saying, I think, something is really important and actually profound, which is that the political leadership of this country should have more say over the monetary policy of this country. I agree with him. That should fundamentally be a political decision. Agree or disagree, we should have America's elected leaders having input about the most important decisions confronting our country. That would the question be a huge to go, change, just so it, people it, understand that. It, it would be a huge change, but whether the country goes to war, what our interest rates are, these are important questions that American de democracy should have important answers for. And I think all President Trump is saying is that, look, it's kind of weird that you have so many bureaucrats making so many important decisions. If the American people don't like our interest rate policy, they should elect somebody different 
to change that policy, nothing should be above democratic debate in this country when it comes to the big questions confronting the United States. Okay, one last question. Please. And I can't believe I have to ask you this, but, but I do, because Donald Trump uh, has been attacking Kamala Harris's racial identity. He has not been, he, but ask your question. Well, he questioned her racial identity. He said a number of years ago, she happened to turn black. Her father is Jamaican. Do you believe Kamala Harris is black? I believe that Kamala Harris is whatever she says she is, but I believe importantly that President Trump is right that she's a chameleon. She pretends to be one thing in front of one audience. She pretends to be something different in front of another audience. Look, Dana, she's not running a political campaign. She's running a movie. She only speaks to voters behind a teleprompter. Everything is scripted. She doesn't have her policy positions out there. She hasn't answered why she wanted to ban fracking, but now she doesn't. She wanted to fund police, but now she doesn't. She wanted to open the border, but now she doesn't. She should have to answer for why she presents a different set of policies to one audience and a different set of policies to another audience. And I think that's what President Trump is getting at. This is a fundamentally fake person. She's different depending on who she's in front of. With, with respect, you Please? changed your position um, on an important thing, which is Donald Trump. Of course I did. You, and and I, so why are you not a chameleon? It. Because, Dana, I've explained to the American people what's different. People change their minds when the facts change, they should. But if you want to be the people's vice president or president, you should have to stand before an interviewer and say, this is why I changed my mind. So to everybody who's seen that I criticize Donald Trump, since he asked the question, here are two you things. You didn't just about, criticize him. You said he could be America's Hitler. Well, that's a criticism. And I didn't say that exactly, but set that to the side. What I, what I said about Donald Trump and what I believed about Donald Trump, two things that really change. First of all, I didn't think Donald Trump would be a good president. He was a great president. Wages were rising. The world was more peaceful. Remember, when Donald Trump was running for president the first time, they said he would start World War III. He brought more peace to the world than any president of my lifetime. The second thing, Dana, is I believed, and I'm ashamed of it, I believed a lot of the media lies about Donald Trump in 2016. I believe that he said things like, for example, the media said Donald Trump accused all Mexicans of being rapists and criminals. You actually look at what he said, he did not say that at all. And I think it's important when you see something, you change your mind, and that's all I've done. And my pitch to the American people would be, I, I imagine a lot of folks who are thinking about voting for Donald Trump in 2024, maybe they've bought in to the media lies about him. Think for yourself, look at what he actually said, and I think you'll find that he's one, a very engaging guy, but two, was a very good president. There aren't media lies. He, we, we play him and we let him speak for himself, and so people are getting exactly. I, I'm not accusing you of lying, no, I know, Dana. I know. You know I like you, but no, the I, media I know you're lies not. from time to time. I know you're about not, but Donald people Trump. people hear him for himself. Last question. Please. Are you going to debate Tim Waltz? Of course, I want to debate Tim Waltz. I think it's important, and I think that it goes to a very fundamental difference between the Trump Vance ticket and our opposition. We believe in talking to the media. We believe in answering questions. We believe in debating. I think it's really important. I mean, look, I'm asking the American people to make me their vice president. It's really important to stand before the American people to make that case. And I'm going to keep on doing it in whatever forum I get the opportunity. We so look thank forward you. to it. Thank you so much Thanks, for Dana. sitting down and taking my questions. Of course. Thank you for coming it. here. The forgotten part of my fellow citizens. It is strong. It's my duty to report the true problems of our nation. We vigorously developed this resource to be of great benefit. Where diverse nations are drawn together in common cause. I will be eternally grateful for your support.